The Lincoln Continental returns to the channel with a few minor changes since its introduction, but largely remains the same as the car that was introduced back in 2016. I'll be placing the Lincoln in my ranking system as a mid-size car at the end of this video, despite the fence-sitting characteristics of this vehicle. The Lincoln Continental is a very hard car to place against other vehicles in the market. It has a similar price point and as tested prices, a lot of mid-size executive sedans, but has significantly more interior space. So it lends itself to be more of a full-size competitor, but it doesn't have the presence like a BMW 7 Series or Mercedes S-Class or Lexus LS. So it rides these two spaces very strangely and it seems to be one of the very few vehicles that actually does this on the current market. If you're an individual that's looking for a full-size car but maybe doesn't have the budget for it, then maybe the Lincoln Continental is the perfect car for you. Because when it comes to rear seat comfort, this Lincoln offers a lot of things that you really wouldn't be able to find in many other vehicles at this price point, but we'll save that for a little later in the video. Let's get the basics out of the way. In Canada, the Lincoln Continental is only all-wheel drive with two different engine choices. You have a 2.7-litre turbocharged V6 or the 3-litre twin-turbocharged V6 that you have in the higher spec model, which is the vehicle I have here. You have two trims, select and reserve for select. It gets that 2.7-litre engine with 335 horsepower and 355 pound-feet of torque and for the larger v6 it's an even cut 400 horsepower and pound-feet of torque with that standard select you'll get some notable features like the 8 inch touchscreen with sync 3 the heated front seats steering wheel mounted paddles the safety tech like blind spot monitoring adaptive lane keep assist the parking sensors the power trunk lid and ambient lighting but stepping up to the reserve is how you should be specking a Lincoln Continental. With this trim level, some added standard features are the heads-up display, the 360-degree cameras with active parking assist, and this full-size panoramic sunroof. Really don't see many of these in sedans. It's perhaps more a common feature that you'll find in SUVs, but it is glorious here, especially living in this part of the world. But this Lincoln is filled with all of the options that you can tick. The rear seat package, which again I'll talk about when I'm back there, but in that it includes the 30-way adjustable seats with active massaging and they're ventilated. For someone that's six foot four, I can get into this seat and it might take a while to find that perfect configuration, but once you do, you set it, you never touch it again, and you can go on very long distance cruises and be very, very happy. One of the problems that introduces itself with these seats though, you see there's a lot of additional surfaces that you're going to have to start cleaning. Dust can very easily get behind this section right here and uh, already it's already got a little bit dirtier. Again, the overall cabin space is impressive. All round visibility is fantastic. And when it comes to the fit and finish of this interior, Everything's very solid and there's some great choice materials, but for this price point and for this kind of car, I would like to see more. So we have this beautiful leather here on the steering wheel and the seats and the center armrest, but I would like to see it extend further because the rest of the materials that you find on the dashboard and uh, the door cards down here, just here on the center tunnel, is largely soft touch plastic, something that you would find in any lesser Ford product and when I was in this car a couple years ago I had complaint with the volume knobs and uh, this main climate control button that you had here because it just didn't feel rigid and solid as a car of this price point should be. When I got into the Navigator a little later in the year that problem seemed to be solved. The buttons felt like they were more representative of the price of that vehicle. But coming back here, it doesn't seem like the Continental has improved at all with that area of complaint. When you get into a car of this price point, you want ultimate tactility. You want every button and switch to feel great. And the buttons do feel good, especially these switches here for your heated and ventilated buttons. But the things that you might be interacting with the most, the volume knob and the fan speed knob, could be better. 
It is nice to see though that we have real wood accents here on the door cards, here along the center console. And the chrome is actual metal chrome and not just a film put on plastic. Instrument cluster is fully digital and you can go do a really minimalism display with this where you only have the speed highlighted and a few other key points of information. And then focus on what I think is one of the best heads up displays in the entire industry. It's almost like a widescreen setup for this Lincoln. It's color display, so here you can see I'm low on fuel, so that is highlighted in orange, but then when you engage your lane keeping assist and your adaptive cruise control, there's actually a Lincoln Continental that shows up in that space. Driving the Continental, you have a sport mode down here and you have a six-speed transmission. Typical in-town driving of this Continental is very easy. It has the same adaptive steering that we've seen in a fair few Ford and Lincoln products now, so so despite this being a very large vehicle, when you're navigating through small and tight spaces, let's say you're going into a parking lot, the steering ratio speeds up and makes this large vehicle feel significantly smaller than it actually is. Talking about the steering wheel, perhaps one specific issue when it comes to the build quality in this car is a little bit of a loose threading here. I'm sure this is just a issue with this specific vehicle, but I think it's something important to note. Leaving the car up to its own devices, the automatic shifting is swift and quite unnoticeable, but if you ever wanna drive this car hard, the paddles are plastic and don't feel all that tactile, and very frequently the car ignores your requests and just makes up its own mind. I will be honest, I haven't done any serious fast driving in this car as I Noticed when I got into this car, it didn't come with winter tires. Uh, so driving in the conditions we've had in town this past week have been a little bit scary from time to time. I noted earlier that I don't think the Continental has the same presence as an S-Class or a Lexus LS, but driving this car in town, you get quite a few head turns and people were interested to find out exactly what this car is. Interesting. All right, so the back seat of the Lincoln is quite a special place. As you can see, first thing you're gonna note is this rather odd looking seat belt. That's because there's actually an airbag inside of it. The plug is just as usual in the event of a crash, this will actually explode around you, keeping you in your seat. And when it does come to that event and you need to get out, it is just as simple as pushing down that seat buckle release. Okay, so this seat here, First of all, I have it in the most reclined position and my hair is still grazing up against the ceiling. It is a shame that there is no ability to lower this seat at all, but for anybody under six foot, you're gonna be very happy in this space. And another thing that you can do is you have the ability to manipulate the front passenger seat. So with these buttons here, you can move that seat forwards or backwards and then actually recline it forwards. It's not gonna go flat all the way so you can't stretch out your legs entirely and use it as a footrest. But here with this amount of space that it has given me with the seat nowhere near as far forward as it can go, I can easily stretch out my legs, slouch a little bit and be very comfortable back here. There's a few things that you're gonna note with this space that kind of remind you of a business jet or some kind of first class seat on an airplane. Those things include this seat pocket here that's elastic and you can easily hide away a few things there. This headrest can actually pinch forward a little bit and help cradle your head. Now, as you can see, I've got this command center already down here, but when you want to maybe carry another passenger, it is a regular seat bag. But folding it down and using it to its full capability is what makes this Lincoln Continental feel like a full-size luxury limousine. You have the ability to raise or lower the rear sunshade if you want, the sunshade over the moonroof, and then you have some manual ones here in the door. With this central command unit, it does represent some of the issues I have with the interior. This panel just in whole feels quite hollow. The knobs don't feel anywhere as nice as what they do 
in the front despite the issues that I've had. Of course with this rear seat package the other things that are important to know you have heated and ventilated seats and with the same button arrangement that you have up front you can get a massage back here too. Again I do think this is a car that is best perhaps aligned as a budget competitor to a Mercedes S-Class or Lexus LS. It doesn't have that six-figure quality that those cars have inherently of course of their price but if you're someone that wants to be driven rather than drive a car this Lincoln Continental does offer a rather interesting proposition to a few people in this marketplace. The Continental is a compelling package to a specific audience. It looks great and has some hard to find technology, but with the execution of this entire package isn't up to snuff to the latest iterations of other mid-size executive sedans. So take a look at the Lincoln Continental if you're interested purchasing one, but I strongly recommend you go and have a look at other manufacturers' mid-size executive sedans to compare the interior quality of them. Thanks for watching this video. I hope to see you again soon.